Good morning, brothers and sisters. Or evening, or whenever it is that you watch this. My name is Eric Tory. I'm one of the newest members of the High Council. I'm looking forward to getting to know all of you a little bit better. I know many of you, but excited to get to know more of you as I serve on the High Council. I've been asked to speak today on patience. So what is patience? Sometimes I think when we think of patience, we think of just enduring through something, um, maybe even resigning to our fate and just letting it happen. Elder Maxwell said though, patience is not indifference. Actually, it means caring very much but being willing, nevertheless, to submit to the Lord and do what the scriptures call the process of time. So it's not just giving up and letting life happen, but rather it's a show of inner strength and devotion to the Lord. From Preach My Gospel, it says, Patience is the capacity to endure delay, trouble, opposition, or suffering without becoming angry, frustrated, or anxious. It is the ability to do God's will and accept his timing. When you are patient, you hold up under pressure and are able to face adversity calmly and hopefully. Well, I don't know about you guys, but I think it would be great to be able to um, hold up under pressure uh, and face adversity calmly and hopefully. I don't think that any of us are per perfect at that, but I think we'll all get better. Um, and we all can get better. Um, we, As we go through life, we can rest assured that the Lord will test us. He'll test our faith and our patience. In Mosiah 23, 21, it says, the Lord seeth fit to chasten his people, yea, he trieth their patience and their faith. And I know chastening is not always the funnest thing, but um, we know that blessings will come. So I thought through some ideas of where we might need patience, and I came up with a few. There's many, of course, but these are just a few. The first one I thought of was patience in situations or circumstances or trials or hardships, things we're going through in life, some of which are because of things we've done and other things that are just completely out of our control. This last conference, there was a lot of really good talks about this as we're all going through this worldwide pandemic with lots of uh, troubles in the world. Um, and so there's lots of talks about this. Uh, so I highly recommend re-listening to conference and studying the messages because they're really awesome. In Elder Holland's talk from Sunday afternoon session, <clears throat> he said... Uh, well, it's all about enduring trials and hardship. It's called waiting on the Lord. He says, There will be times in our lives when even our best spiritual efforts and earnest pleading prayers do not yield the victories for which we have yearned. He continues, So while we work and wait together for the answers to some of our prayers, I offer you my apostolic promise that they are heard and they are answered, though perhaps not at the time or in the way we wanted. He then goes on and tells uh, or recounts many stories from the scriptures where many uh, miracles happen instantaneously. But then he says, for every one of these, there's other stories and experiences of prophets and these same people who had to wait and wait and wait. He talks about the uh, children of Israel waiting for 40 years in the wilderness. And he talks about Elijah who called down fire from heaven and then later was starving in the desert and only being fed by whatever a little raven could bring him. Um, he then says, the point is that faith means trusting in God in good times and bad, even if that includes some suffering until we see his arm revealed in our behalf. He then said, my beloved brothers and sisters, Christianity is comforting, but it is often not comfortable. The path to holiness and happiness here and hereafter is a long and sometimes rocky one. It takes time and tenacity to walk it, but of course the reward for doing so is monumental. Um, I love Elder Holland and his way of uh, phrasing these things. Christianity is comforting, but it is not comfortable. And when we think of patience, often it's uh, enduring through things that are not comfortable, that are not uh, pleasant for us, but we have to go through them anyways. Um, another area that we need to have patience is with others, with those around us, and especially with those closest to us. Um, I think sometimes we are patient or kind to those that we don't really know that well and we kind of let our guard down when we're around our family and those that we love the most and sometimes <clears throat> we can let our impatience show. Um, so we need to be aware of that and try to be 
just as patient or more patient with those that are closest to us. Um, especially with children. Um, as a parent of young children, I, I know that it's very challenging and it's hard to be patient sometimes. But I know that as I try to listen to my kids and be patient with them, uh, that hopefully they can learn that I'm uh, someone they can always come to regardless of what their question or concern is that I won't brush it off as silly but I'll be patient with them so that when they have big questions and big problems that um, hopefully they'll come to me and I can help them with those. Um, lastly <clears throat> I think we need to have patience with ourselves um, as we are learning and growing and trying to develop new skills or just get better at anything in life we have to realize that um, we're not going to get there instantly, especially in this world of uh, social media and comparing ourselves to others or comparing ourselves to what we perceive um, others are like. We have to realize that we only see their best selves, you know, on their Instagram posts or whatever it is. Um, everyone struggles and everybody um, has challenges when they're trying to improve and learn and go through life. So we have to be patient with ourselves as we are trying to become better. Um, a while ago my wife showed me a, I think it was an article or something um, maybe it was just a meme on the internet but it was talking about uh, the Beatitudes and how uh, when we read them sometimes they seem kind of strange like blessed are the those who mourn for they shall be comforted and sometimes when we're mourning we don't feel that comforted <clears throat> or blessed are the the meek for they shall inherit the earth and if we're trying to be meek how are we inheriting the earth it doesn't make sense but this article that she showed me said that we should kind of add the words through Christ to that. That through Christ, those who mourn will be comforted. And when we're meek, then through Christ we shall inherit the earth. And if you go through the Beatitudes and, and use that, um, it shows how it's possible that those things can happen. And so we have to be patient with ourselves and realize that by ourselves we can't do all these things. But as we pray and ask for help that eventually in God's time and through Christ we will um, improve and get better and do the things that we want to do. Okay so that brings me to the point of uh, how can we develop patience and I don't have amazing answers but I have a few thoughts. One is that we can pray for it. Uh, any any godly gift um, is or any gifts of the Spirit are things that we can pray for and Heavenly Father will bless us with those things if we earnestly seek for it. Um, I'm reminded of the people of Alma. Um, they were in bondage and they prayed for deliverance. <clears throat> and the Lord did not just instantly deliver them. As we know, he strengthened them instead so they can endure through those trials that they were going through. So as we're praying for patience, we should keep that in mind and remember that sometimes the Lord doesn't answer our prayers exactly the way we want them. But he will answer them and he does hear our prayers and he will help us. And sometimes he'll help us in ways that we couldn't have even imagined or thought of but they, um, they will be in ways that will help us uh, more than we could possibly imagine. Another thing we can do to develop patience is practice. Uh, patience is a skill. Just like any other skill we have, we can get better at it. We can practice. Um, <clears throat> so some things we can do, uh, I'm no expert again, but uh, sometimes just taking a, a breather, literally a breather, if we're in a frustrating situation, if we can stop, We'll first recognize that we're in a frustrating that we're frustrated and then we can stop and even just take 10 deep breaths before you let yourself react and by the time you do that um, often you'll have calmed down enough that you can deal with whatever's going on and move forward <clears throat> excuse me um, uh, like playing the piano we have to practice right so being patient we need to think of ways that we can practice being patient um, so some ways I was doing some googling and searching and some things that sounded good to me was one was uh, paying attention to ourselves kind of having some mindfulness and being aware of when we are the most impatient and try to recognize that and then in that moment don't beat yourself up for being impatient but instead realize okay I'm not perfect but I'm working on this and then seek to uh, after we've recognized those moments try to change our automatic reaction, whatever that is. Um, trying to quell those critical thoughts or whatever you're thinking in that situation, try to think something better or kinder or something that is more Christ-like. Um, often we go through 
well, we go through things all the time that are small annoyances, um, like, uh, you know, having a bug bite or a rash, uh, sunburns, being cold, standing in the line, driving in traffic. These are things that can aggravate us, but they're bearable. So in those situations, if we recognize that we're becoming impatient, then we can try to change our reaction in those in those small moments. And if we <clears throat> gradually build up patience to these small irritations and uncomfortable things in our life and start uh, reacting better to them, that will be a good way to practice so that when big problems come along, we can we can have a, a better skill set to deal with them. Um, in Romans 5, verse 3, it says, We glory in tribulations also, knowing that tribulation worketh patience. So when we go through tribulations, we can at least know that uh, we're increasing our patience. <laughs> I know it's hard in the moment of tribulation to recognize that, hey, this is going to help me in the future, but it is something that we can... Uh, we can take comfort in knowing that when we go through hard things, we go through trials, it will benefit us and help us and it help us develop our characters and become the type of people that can withstand uh, greater trials in the future. Um, so in closing, I have some, some thoughts about patience from Elder Maxwell. Uh, he gave an amazing quote like almost 40 years ago, I think it was in 1980, about patience that's amazing. He said, patience is a willingness in a sense to watch the unfolding purposes of God with a sense of wonder and awe, rather than pacing up and down within the cell of our circumstances. Put another way, too much anxious opening of the oven door and the cake falls instead of rising. So it is with us. If we are willing, if we are always selfishly taking our temperature to see if we are happy, we will not be. He then said, we should savor even the seemingly ordinary times for life cannot be made up of all kettle drums and clashing cymbals there must be some flutes and violins living cannot be all crescendo there must be some counterpoint clearly without patience we will learn less in life we will see less we will feel less we will hear less ironically rush and more usually mean less the pressures of now time and time again go against the grain of the gospel with its eternalism i love uh i love that um so often we get carried away with being fast and rush, rush. Everything's got to be now. And I think we need to take time to enjoy and to learn from both those high moments in life and just the ordinary. Um, in conclusion, in Hebrews 12, 1, it says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doth, which doth so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, um, this is a marathon, not a sprint, I think. He says, run that race, but we have to realize that it's a, it's a long race. Joseph Smith in Doctrine and Covenants 128, verse 22 said, Brethren, shall we not go on in so great a cause? Go forward and not backwards. Courage, brethren and sisters. I add, and on, on to the victory. Let your hearts rejoice and be exceedingly glad. Brothers and sisters, I'm so grateful for the gospel. <clears throat> I know that as we work uh, to develop our patience, that we will be blessed. And as we pray for it, that we will um, be blessed with an increased ability to be patient. Our Savior Jesus Christ was the greatest uh, example of patience, whether it was the multitudes thronging him or people constantly um, begging him for miracles or food or healings. Um, he was so patient with them. He loved them. And I know that he's patient with us and he loves us. And I know that he is our savior and that he will help us and that we can develop this, this trait of patience if we strive for it. And I say these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.